I also am recording. Hello, this is recording. And I'm ready to just fucking play some dunda and have some fucking fun and kick some ass. And I have so many insane possibilities, and I'm sure we're going to get the one bad one. Welcome to Testers and Jesters, the show where two friends roleplay and explore in Dungeons and Dragons. This week, Testers and Jesters, for the third time, we're going to do it. We're going to kick some ass, we're going to take some names, and we're going to have some fun, hopefully. So this one is called Beneath the Ground. It's the second D&D story I'm writing for the book. It's all about going beneath the ground. So I'm going to read the little intro for you, Matt, to see hopefully you'll get excited. Beneath the Ground. Many years ago, before the town of Jarvaron was founded, before the church was built, before the Pressens moved from Harper's Revelations, before the tunnels that connect the two were dug, um, something was below the ground. Recently, something or someone has begun work beneath the ground. What evil are they committing? What darkness have they unleashed? And we're going to roll for all these things. But first, what are you playing today, anyway? Oh, yeah, I remember this guy. Yeah, he was, he, yeah. Yeah, and he was the big buff dude that broke shit with magic, right? Cool. Here's how we're going to do this. You have been traveling for a long time, and you've been looking for glory and honor. And while looking for glory and honor, you managed to find a job posting at a nearby town. When you were trading and moving around, you found a job posting out in the middle of nowhere. And you know that the middle of nowhere is where shit gets done. Where bad shit happens. And in a small little tavern in the middle of nowhere... You have been called. You have been called to Preston's Pond. It is a small little bar in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you're hanging out with a man named Jorgen. He has told you in your travels. He's also a gearhorn, and you met him in a small town. You saw him grab the job posting as well. You both grabbed it off the wall at the same time. Your hands touched seductively. You felt uncomfortable. He, big, strong, terrifying man, reminds you of your chief of your tribe. He seemed very interested in this job post. More interested than he should. Anything you want to say to him while you're in the carriage on the way down there? Yeah, so you're praying on the way there. He sees you praying in the cart with him. He looks at you and he says, I don't care much for the gods. I never trusted them. He says, patrons, gods, anything that's not flesh and blood is wrong. And I don't care if people believe in them or if they worship them or if they follow them, they're wrong. Really? Well... They might be using you. If you owe them, you owe them. And I can respect that. Everything seems slightly darker out and all the plants seem slightly off. Yorm looks out. Something's off. Something's wrong here. Well, whatever patron you have, you better hope they can protect you. Or you better hope you can protect yourself. In front of you is an inn. Uh, there's also a church. And Yorm walks into the bar. Keep your eye out. People here are odd. He walks inside. Anyway, as Yorm walks in, what do you do? Jorgen walks up, and he looks at this woman, and he says, and he bows, surprisingly. You've never seen this man show respect to anyone, because everyone around him has been weaker. But he looks at this woman, and he says, Avadine, so good to see you again. Welcome. I haven't seen you in these parts for a while. She says, who's your friend? And she looks at you. She says, ah, oh, another one of you, Gearhorn. Well, what do you want? 
And Jorgen says, uh, I was told, he holds up his paper, and he points it at, at it, and he says, uh, someone named Bernard is supposed to meet us here. And she points to the corner of the room, and you see two men in the corner. A Chad-looking man and an older man with glasses. He shoves this man immediately, the Chad. The Chad looks down, and he walks away. He walks up to this man, and he says, are you Bernard? And he says, uh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, totally, huh? What do you want? I'm busy. And he's looking at a piece of paper, and he looks very, very tired. You can tell absolutely nothing. You don't know this guy. You don't know anything about him. You don't know anything about these people. Uh, everybody seems just like people, but there's something is off about some people. Everybody does seem to be very pale, but you don't know if that's just the way people look here or not. He looks at him and he says, uh, are you the guy we're here to see? And the guy says, what are you, what? And he looks up and he says, uh, huh, what are you? And he points at you with your fucking skull on your head. Yeah, I can see that. Two gear horn. Fascinating. And he says, uh, well, have you come to, uh, do the mission here? Have you come to see, to do my, uh, my mission? Sent out a little thing? We need, we need bodyguards. Well, there's a camp of all of us. A bunch of like-minded individuals. We all, we, uh, we study things. All kinds of things. things. We're currently studying something very interesting b below the ground. Um, you don't have a problem with going underground, do you? Tight spaces. Uh, we need you to come with us to the tunnels. You need to help me get back down there because it's very hard to find a way in. There's a lot of different entrances. And once we make it to the camp, I'm going to need you to help me and uh, my people do a couple of things that may be very dangerous. And uh, we, we need some strong men like the two of you to help us through them. Shouldn't be much. Should just be dusty old tomb. Should be fine. Um, I will warn you, there have been hobgoblins in the area. They have taken uh, the nearby fort. It's, uh, it's been it's been called the ever changing fort because it's constantly changing hands, not because it constantly changes. I know it seems confusing. He continues to drone off, and it seems like uh, he's not even looking at you anymore. Yorg looks at you and he says, uh, "Okay then, kid. What do you want to do here? Are you coming with?" Uh, he pulls out a map and he says, "Where are the entrances to this tunnel network?" When he points at the map, here are the entrances. Legends say there's one inside of the fort that leads out. There's a cave network to the west. And um, some people say that there's an old abandoned house that leads into the tunnels. But I don't know if I believe that. People also say that you can just fall it down there and that there's holes everywhere that can lead there. I don't know if I believe all that. Where would you guys like to go? I don't really know how I'm going to get back down there. To be completely honest, I haven't been there yet. Uh, the rest of the camp has been set up down there, and my daughter invited me, but I thought she was being an idiot for not having protection with us. So I'm looking, and I'm glad I found y'all. So, uh, in this place, my daughter said that there may be a few entrances, and that they went through the caves, but there are supposedly other le legends of other entrances into these this labyrinth below us. The real question is, what would you like to do? And Yorg looks at you, and he says, look, kid, I can do anything. I'll be fine with whatever happens. You're the one with the patron. What do you think we should do? Yorg looks at you and he says, Is, are you fine? He turns to Bertrand. He says, are you fine with that? Seems like the least um, tactical of choices, but you know what? Interesting nonetheless. In this moment, I'd like you to make an insight check on him with advantage. Okay, because he's a gearhorn, you know, you can read him like a book. You can tell that he is bored with his life. As you really get a good look at him, you realize he's very old and he seems so unbelievably bored. You can tell from his tattoos that he's been through a lot of shit and all his scars and he seems like a very honorable and powerful man and he's just bored with his life. And he's going to let you take the lead on this one because he just wants to see what your God will do for you. And he doesn't believe in patron, but he's, he, he's going to see if what you got. And uh, Bertrand looks at you and he says, that's a terrible idea, but let's do it. Sounds exciting. I, I'm sure it's not there, but if you want to go through there, then fine. I, there's no one else coming to help me. Okay, then, to the, to the abandoned house in the middle of nowhere. Do you want to ask anybody about this? Do you want to get some intel, or do you want to just go straight on down to this incredibly terrifying house? 
Okay. Okay. I don't know about glory. All I know is that I want to survive and I want to see my daughter down there, but okay. Let's, let's head on down. As you begin to leave the bar, uh, York looks at, at Avidine and he says, it's nice to see you, Avidine. Very nice to meet you. He kind of nods to this man over here and then uh, he nods back and then he continues to walk out. And the three of you go on your merry way. You now have a really, really weak historian with you. The place, as you walk out of the town, you realize several wells to give the town uh, water as you walk through the farms into the woods, just straight toward the cottage that you've heard about. You see a cottage in the middle of the woods. There was no road leading here, nothing. You're just walking through the swamp for about 10 minutes straight as he's leading you there. He says, uh, watch your step. The forest has been um, peculiar as of late. Anything you want to ask anybody? You head into this thing. Okay. as you are basically a traumatized mess. So do you just start walking in front of him because he's taking too long then? Do you just push your way in? Okay. You begin to push your way through the woods past Bertrand as he began to say the woods are kind of peculiar. You just kind of nudge him and keep walking forward dead-eyed. And then Yorg sort of laughs and they continue to follow you. You go into this old cottage. And as you look at the cottage, it feels like a lot of people have lived here. Okay, as you walk into the cottage, since you're going so fast through it, you walk inside the building, the door immediately breaks as you just pound it down. So are you like dead eye, just like destroying everything in your path? Yeah, so you just walk up to the door, you just fucking cut through the front door, the door falls down, broken and shit, it was already broken, it wasn't even closed. You walk through the fucking living room. There's like a kitchen. People have obviously lived here. A lot of different people. You could see that like witches potions sitting around like like a cauldron. Nothing. Just empty bottles and a cauldron. Like people have been, you know, using this place like witches and all kinds of people. And you go down into the basement because you know that there's a tunnel down and you just keep fucking hitting shit. And as you reach the basement, you, you immediately just like stomp on the floor and fall down into the ground. The three of you immediately fall all the way to the bottom of a deep, deep hole. And as you hit the ground, you notice that there doesn't seem to be a way back up. You wanted to go fast, so you did. And you managed to fall through the, the basement floor and land deep into here. There is a ladder that seems to go back up, but it seems very badly damaged, and uh, the trapdoor seems to be shut above it. So, you enter this cave. Um, Bertrand immediately falls and almost burns on the cauldron in the middle of the room and falls over to the side, and he's laying on the ground hurt. Uh, how do you react to this? Okay, he heals up a little bit, and you can see that he stands back up. He wasn't all that hurt, but uh, he could have died. And he says, uh, thank you. And as you look, you see that Yorm is already trying to open them. Like, he didn't even know. He didn't even look at him. Yeah, sure. Okay, with a 19, you can tell that this cauldron seems to be emanating a sort of transmutational fire. It's basically like um, prestidigitation is like permanently cast on this cauldron so it's always providing light and it seems to be from maybe those witches from before the, that his place seemed to be abandoned there's crates everywhere there's lanterns there's playing cards it's and there's also a cage behind you and it, it just seems like a lot of different people have just stored shit in this cave like it's like a hidey for that house it seems like a lot of unsavory characters have hung out in that uh yeah sure Okay, with a 17, you manage to kick it down. Uh, how do you kick it over? Uh, as you kick it over, everything gets very, very bright. Uh, it hits the ground and the fire starts to spread for a second, but then it goes back into the pot, and the pot just continues to burn as it hits the ground. Uh, there's nothing underneath it, it's just sitting there, and you just sort of kick it to the ground. And it seems like the light in- the fire inside is always burning the same way. It seems contained within it, and uh, it doesn't seem to be connect to anything. As you're doing this, you see Jorgen, and uh, he's like kicking the door down, trying to kick it open. And he manages to open it up a little bit. 
And he looks at you and he says, uh, are you done playing with the lights? You pick up the lantern. Virgin says, uh, I'm glad I got you guys because uh, I think I might have broken my leg when I fell in here. But I also wouldn't have gone into that building. So not sure if this is worth the money. Um, you walk first, right? As you are walking through the tunnel, you smell a smelly smell that smells smelly. Uh, you smell mushrooms and fungus. It's like a dank, dank place down here. Everything seems thick and painful almost. Okay. Right, your light becomes even brighter, and as you look through the tunnel, you can see rubble in a pond of water in front of you. But anyway, you light it up, and you see that there is, um, in the water, sort of grubs moving around and uh, worms and whatnot. And the water seems really dirty looking. Not super, super dirty, but it, it looks pretty bad. Pretty murky. Uh, as you two hand... You see, so you look into the water, and I want you to do a perception check and an investigation check. Yeah, so you basically, you took your lantern, you used magic to make it even brighter, and it went so bright that you were blinded for a second. You overdid your, your sight, and you've, you've now blinded yourself in the dark. As you sit in complete and utter dark, just confused and baffled at how unbelievably dark it is getting around you, blinded by your own hubris, you feel something rubbing against your leg in the dark. How do you react? You now feel several something against your leg. Okay, swinging wildly at whatever you don't see. So you swing to hit whatever this thing is, and you hit it, and you hear a squish. You hear, and you hear, and that's it. You then suddenly regain your sight because you open your eyes. You see nothing. There's nothing around you. You see some goo on the ground, and uh, in the water, there's nothing there now. Something was in the water, but you couldn't tell what it was, and there was rubble in the water, and you looked down in it, and you were blinded by your own light, and then you heard, and uh, you, you stepped on something, and it's on the bottom of your sword or your shoe or whatever you hit it with, um, but you can't tell what it was. What happened? Said, I didn't see anything, but I was behind the door. Says, is it safe? Is it safe to go through? Okay. Uh, he then guards the other man. Um, in front of you is a long, dark tunnel where there's probably more of whatever that was. The air seems dank and um, fungal, and uh, there's no way back. Uh, actually, technically, you never checked if there was a way back, but the trap door above you is closed, but you don't know if it's locked. You were so determined that you didn't even think about going. Checked for traps, and then you were like, all right, let's go. So are you still as determined as you were before? You were so determined, and then suddenly you blinded yourself, and there was something touching your foot. All right, what would you like to do? Okay. As you look around the room, uh, you notice wet marks going down the hallway and up in the wall. And there are some holes in the walls. Uh, and as you look more at the walls, you notice that the walls are made of dirt. And this just seems to be a tunnel that was just dug in the ground. And uh, it doesn't have many supports. You're not really sure how this tunnel even exists, to be honest. Yeah, probably. You know, any second it could happen. I mean, it, it seems like this place shouldn't even be dug. There's no support, but there's also no stone on the walls. It's just a dirt hole, and it's somehow still here, and it shouldn't. The room you were in before was a cave that was dug out and had supports and walls. It was an actual basement. But as soon as you opened the door, it suddenly was a, just a room of dirt, and there's water and stone on the ground, but it's as if, I don't know, magic maybe? Or maybe something else? You're not really sure. You, you begin to push, push forward, and you walk into the next. The other two follow you slowly, Jorgen protecting uh, Bernard as you walk through. As you walk into a room, you see several mushrooms sitting in a pond. And to your right, or technically north, is a another room that is bigger. Um, these mushrooms are giving off a weird smell. They, they seem to be part of the source of all this dankness, but it seems to be coming from... 
Uh, with a 10, this place seems weird. Everything seems weird. Everything seems off. And you just feel overall very uncomfortable with what is going on. Everything seems very uh, creepy. And you've been in a lot of caves because, you know, you're from Gearhorn. You're from the, wil the icy wilderness. You know what it's like to be in a cave. This is not a normal cave. Something feels off about this place. And those mushrooms seem dangerous. Okay, what do you do? Okay. But no, yeah. Okay, you create a sphere of magical fire. How long does that last? Okay, so for the next minute, you have a ball of fire. So, you, that, you start to burn them. Uh, roll your damage. Okay, the mushrooms there seem to burn. And for a split second, you hear what sounds like screaming. Yeah, you hear a very painful and terrifying sound. Um, a loud, sharp noise in your head. Uh, for a split second as they burn, but they burnt so fast. They, they seem to, the ones on the top are gone, and the rest go on into the water below. And the mushrooms seem to be moving. So they're blocked off. You don't know what's going on under that sphere. Basically, you make a giant ball of fire, and then you see a giant ball of fire. And when you look through it, those mushrooms seem to be gone, but there's other stuff in the water below it. Okay, so it, it, it will work in water. Uh, as you push the sphere into the water, you hear more screeching that you've never heard before, and then suddenly silence. Um, your ball of fire is now within the water. As you look deeper into the water, you realize that it goes down for a very long time. There seem to be cracks in the bottom of the pond that go even deeper, and you're not really sure how far that down that goes. That is all. The, the screeching stops. Um, what do you do for the rest of your 45, no, for your 55 seconds you have with this ball of fire? As you go into the bigger chamber, you see in front of you a very large room. Pathways in all directions. You don't know which way is the right way. You don't know what these mushrooms are that are all over the room. You don't know what these trees are in the center of the room. So yeah, what do you do? You just see there's, there are nine directions you could be going in. You could literally be going in any direction. Okay, uh, as you begin to walk down this tunnel, you notice mushrooms and a light in the distance. Ooh, great idea. I'm assuming you let them in the tunnel as well. Okay, so all of you basically, you basically close the tunnel off behind you, fire. All right, in front of you is a crystal, and there appears to be some sort of ladder here. Mushrooms, there's mushrooms. Um, you know nothing about this crystal? Pretty, 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 pretty light. Pretty light. That's what you see. You see, oh, that's a crystal. It doesn't seem all that scary. Uh, and those mushrooms are there. I don't know if those are normal mushrooms or the creepy murder mushrooms. And you see the ladder and you know, oh shit, is that a way out? Does that go somewhere? I don't know. You head back in. The other two follow. Bernard, he looks at you and he says, um, this is fucking weird. Does anybody else think this is fucking weird? Why is this here? Why are these tunnels here? Why are there fucking mushrooms screaming? What, what is this place? There's nothing about this by the camp. The camp said nothing about this. As far as I can tell, the camp must be somewhere to the north, but I have no idea which way that these tunnels lead north. This place is terrifying, and why is there a ladder there? Where does that go? What do we do? What are we doing here? What do we do? You're the expert, says the expert. Cryptic. Really glad I I paid you two to bring me down here. Really glad I came here. We could have gone through the cave. Probably could have met a welcoming party or something. We could have could have had tea by now and see my daughter again. It's been a couple years. You know we're not all that close anymore. But you know she roped me into this really stupid expedition. But okay. Uh, and he kind of sits there and and York just kind of just kind of nods. Oh, also the mm -hmm. water the water in front of you is slightly murkier. As you peek into the chamber, you know the same thing as before. Mushrooms, more of them. Yeah, another ladder and another crystal. This place is weird. Yeah, right? You have no idea where these ladders lead? Everything seems very odd about this place. I'm assuming you're going to go to the next one, right? Each time you look at a tunnel, as you go to the third tunnel, there is another pond with mushrooms in it. There are more crystals that provide light, and there is another ladder. But this next tunnel you seem now, now, it, at the edge of this tunnel seems to be more mushrooms and you're going to have to get close to them if you want to go through that one. 
Okay. Um, so the one right above you. Um, as you step closer to it, you hear that sound begin. What do you do? That loud sound that you couldn't make out begin. Also, um, just... I think your fireball is gone by now. Venom. So yeah, you, you begin to hear that sound. I'm going to give you a reaction. What do you do? Okay. As you keep moving forward, that, so that sound begins and it gets louder and louder and louder. And you begin to hear this high-pitched whistle go... What do you do? Just keep moving. Um, as you keep moving, it keeps making that noise. And then the other mushrooms begin to keep making that noise. And Bernard kind of yells out, I think it's an alarm of some kind. How do you react? That's what he says, because this basically, you walked up to a mushroom. It started making that noise before in the water. This time you went up to the mushroom. It did the same thing, but you didn't destroy it. Uh, and it's screeching even louder. And then the other mushroom on the other side of the room started screeching. And it's spreading. All the mushrooms are beginning to scream. Like a wave. So Bert Bertrand screamed out, it's an alarm. Uh, what do you do? Okay. Okay, um, you immediately burn it up and it disintegrates. Um, but the other ones keep going. There's another one next to it, that one's screeching, and then down the hall there's another one. And then it seems to spread, and now this one down here is also screeching. Jorgen looks at you and he's like, where do we keep the guy? Where do we keep this guy? What, what do you want to do here? You said you want to hold your stand, you don't want to run? He says, okay, you want to push forward? Okay. Because you can hold your ground and wait for something you want. Okay, the, the ringing begins louder and louder in your ears, and all of you begin to run at full speed because you can hear the screeching chasing you. It's like screaming. It's like... The mushrooms are screaming at full volume, just screeching in your mind, echoing. You guys seem to leave the mushroom sound, and it seems to fade. You've gotten far enough away from it, but you have no idea what it called or what's down there. Around you are crystals in every direction that light up tunnels that seem random. And as you reach these tunnels, they seem to be not like the other tunnels. They seem to be normal cave tunnels, like they were dug through with water. Uh, and there appears to be an entra two entrances that go north. You enter into the room, and um, this place seems very, very dark. And as you walk into this area, there seems to be dozens of skulls and skeletons of corpses. And it doesn't seem like you're next to a wall. It seems like everything's very dark where you are. And remember, you put out your light when you blinded. There is a pond filled with dozens of corpses and what seems to be eggs, but they're mushroomy on the edges. Around you is darkness, but it's not like pitch. It's pitch black, but you know that there's more... There's more tunnel around. You're not by a wall. What do you do? Yep, there's skeletons, and there seem to be eggs that are spongy. And um, you know that there is more to your right, but you can't see it because you don't have any... You just have a torch. You're not even going to look at it or anything? Okay, you set the eggs on fire, and you burn them with holy light, terrified of what is around you. You have no idea what is happening. You're just in the cave from aliens and you're just like, you're not like the scientists where they're like, Ooh, let's take it back to our lab. You're like, yeah, no, <laughs> dude, it's funny. If you would have gone through the caves, you probably would have met them first and then come in here with scientists and it would have been alien. But I like the idea that this is, this is aliens from the point of view of a Marine who just walked in. Like he just walked in the room. He's like, Oh fuck this. And he burned the shit. I like you're with a scientist, and he's like, fuck this place. <laughs> this is a realistic alien. But yeah, you felt, all you know so far is you felt something touch your legs, and the mushrooms around every corner scream when you get near them. And they appear to move, and there appears to be other things in the water. Also, these, these skeletons, they're all in the water. There's a, there's a pond here. A very small pond that's almost shallow. And the skeletons are floating on the surface, and there are eggs that are spongy. So you burn them. Um, they begin to burn, and you notice something. You hear a familiar sound. It's the sound you heard before when you were terrified. The thing that touched you earlier. Um, and you begin to see coming out of the walls and around in the water and on the corpses of the dead. How do you react to this? They seem to be these little wormy things with spiky teeth around them, as far as you can tell. Closest thing you can think in your mind is leeches. But those aren't leeches. 
That's what you see. You see the remains of a human body, several bodies, in fact, dozens of them, just skeletons with little fleshy creatures, little wormy, toothy monsters just crawling out of them. And they are coming towards you. And you realize that's what was touching your leg. Uh, what do you do? Okay, as you shoot into them, they seem not that hurt. You kill a couple of the bugs, but they're a swarm, and they're moving towards you guys. Uh, what do you do? Um, so there's basically two paths behind you. One is dark, the other has screaming mushrooms in it. So you begin to run, and in front of you is a path forward, and the other way is a path upward. The other one is a path down, and it will lead back where you were. Where do you run? Okay. Okay, you run upward, screaming into the night, terrified of the horrible parasites eating the flesh of the men in the corner. There seems to be a path to your right and a path forward, and in front of you, you see what seems to be a more lit area. A door frame, as far as you can tell in the shadows, but with no door in it. Okay, as you run in, you realize, running under it, that it is a support for a mine shaft. In front of you is a direction up and a direction to the left. You run at full speed, hair flying back as you run in fear of the fleshy creatures and screaming mushrooms. No idea what the mushrooms alert or if those screaming creatures are even related to this. And as you run in, you see another skeleton in a pond filled with mushrooms. And there's a way north. You just keep running. All right. You were terrified of whatever is in this place. At this point, you no longer have the bravado you started with. You run into the mine, and you notice a hallway with even more skeletons and mushrooms and eggs. Two more ponds. And you see in front of you a grate with a hole in the ground and a barricaded entrance. Also, in the corner is another mushroom, but it doesn't seem to be the one that screamed. It seems to be the other one that was next to it. You're now in a massive room with a barricaded entrance. The back entrance you came through. Two entrance exits to the right, one that leads to more ponds and one that goes outward. And there appears to be a hole in the ground with, seems to be like cage walls over. Um, and next to you is a mushroom and you're not sure what it is or what it does. It's not the mushroom that was screaming. It's the other one that you burned. Okay, burn it. As you do eight radiant damage, you kill it and it hits zero HP. You feel happy for a moment, and then you realize that the mushroom explodes out spores in a burst of death. Make a con save. Well, I rolled in that one. Oh! <laughs> because of that, I'm going to make you roll your own damage. Roll 3d6s. What? Okay, you take all that damage. Where's your, what's your health at? You know what's funny is this is only a half challenge rating monster. There's another fucking 13 in here, remember? Yeah. Remember when you were all like, oh, I can handle it. So, yeah, so you take that damage and you are now poisoned. You have disadvantage on all attack rolls and ability checks. Uh, roll a d12. What's your con... For the next five days, you have this poison in your system. As you um, feel that touch you, you're horrified about what just happened. And you realize that when you blew up the other ones, when you burnt them, that could have happened to you. Um, and somehow you were far enough away because you used the spear. If you would have sacred flamed that, it would have happened to you before. So anyway, you feel the poison enter your veins. Your friends also get a little poisoned. And uh, you are now in the middle of the room, and you are terrified. Uh, there is basically only one way through. It's to the right. You could also go into the deadly ponds, but you know those are dangerous. Um, there's also a barricade behind you. So you're in a big room. There's a hole beneath you with bars on it. There's a barricade, and there is an exit. What would you like to do? Yep, that makes sense. Uh, you managed to hit into the barricade. It is very sturdy. Deal damage. 
Um, you deal six slashing damage to it, and you manage to break a little bit of it off. It is made out of very thick wood, and it's going to take a, lot, a little bit to break through. Bernard then screams, What the hell are we going to do? What are we going to do? I don't want to die. I don't want to die. And then he goes, Oh my god, my daughter's in here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Eeyore just looks at you and he's like, okay, I'm done fucking around. And he just fucking bashes on the wall with you. And he's like, oh, fuck, this is not good. And he, you've never seen him lose his cool yet. And he's like, oh, shit, what the fuck? Uh, you hear down the hall, things are coming. You don't know what, but something is coming. Something big. Yes. You managed to break a hole big enough for the three of you to squish yeah. through. Bernard is screaming. He's like, oh my god, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? And then Jorgen is like, oh shit. He's like breaking it. And then you're, you like call to God himself. You're like, save me, my patron. Light shoots down, and all you see is from the other side of the barricade, like the wall melt like a fucking lightsaber went through it. And you yeah. jump in. What do you do after you all get through the barricade? The barricade's still there. You just cut a hole on the side. As you begin to run through, Yorg grabs the barricade and he pulls it back so that it covers the entire tunnel as you guys begin to run. Barricade is very sturdy and surprisingly you cut it in a very good spot so it can be reused. You see a light at the end of the tunnel with a campfire in front of it. There appears to be an entrance going north as well. What do you do? You sprint through the tunnel into the light, escaping the horrifying tunnels, and you find yourself outside. What do you do? Wow. Um, well, he blocked off with the barricade. It's re-barricaded. Like, you grabbed the barricade that you broke down, and he reapplied it to the wall. Like, he pulled it farther down the tunnel where it was tighter. So it's still closed off like before. The barricade was there before. Bernard looked at you and he goes, I don't know if that's going to hold, but we're outside. We're outside. He's like, ground, and he just touches the swamp dirt. And he's like, oh my god, the ground. The ground. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I think she's fine. She's got to be fine. He looks at you and he's like, you got to save her, man. You're supposed to be the glorious hero. Now this isn't a mission... Of you taking me to my mother, my daughter's camp. Now you're trying to get me to, you're trying to get her out of there. I'm not going back in there. And Jorgen looks at you and he says, you did want glory. It's nothing more glorious than saving a bunch of nerds in a pit of hell. You're not even going to take a break. You're just like, all right, let's go back. <laughs> As you yeah. begin to walk back in. As you go back in, York grabs your shoulder and he's like, "We need, we need help. We need, we need, we need to take a break, man. You fucking, how much magic do you have left? Then why are you going back in there? We just got out. Who knows how deep those tunnels go?" He says, "You gotta think smart. You gotta be." Yeah, but glory doesn't mean going in a cave and getting killed by fucking worms. Like glory means knowing when you need to leave. And we need to get help. We, you, a, a, a tribe is only strong with all their members. The Gearhorn aren't idiots. We don't just run into battle because it's glorious. We run into battle because we have help. Because we know we can win. This is an unwinnable situation with just three of us with no rest. Plus, you're poisoned. You don't even know what those things are doing to you. You really want to go deeper into the, into the fungus? Yeah, but I don't know if dying before had parasites inside of you that may do something to you he says look if you want to go back in there i'll come with but uh you need to be ready are you sure you want to go back in there yes um we could we can end it here if i was going to say do you want to take a break or do you want to end it Dude, I love how that went, because that is not what I expected. 
the original, like, when I first got saw your roles, I was like, okay, we're going to go. You were supposed to start in the camp. And I was like, fuck that. We're going to go to the camp. Dude, it's a completely different story than what it could have been. You know what? It's funny. If we if we do finish this one, I do want to do it again, but actually do it where we start in the camp. Because, like, it's a completely different story then. This could have been... It, that's why I love this. You see what I mean by my dungeons now? Do you see how they make sense? Because a DM could run this 50 times and it's different every time. Even just these exact roles could be different. Because it's like, oh, you start in the campsite well then you and basically it would start with the three of you walking in and it would be like you got there fine and then you would meet his daughter and then you guys would go do alien shit where they were like bring you into those tunnels and the fucking shriek shrieking monsters would come out and shit you know dude you didn't even see the actual enemies <laughs> dude you fought a challenge rating half and a challenge rating half that was a level one dungeon. That was a dungeon that a person who was level one should be able to do. But there were so many of them, and it was so terrifying that you were like, I'm out. But also, dude, there's a challenge rating 13 in there. And it's causing all this. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed Beneath the Ground, The Nest. Yeah, part one. I, this is going to be fun. Yeah, I like it. So you also, what did you roll? You roll a what a, f a five? So you're gonna be you're still poisoned for five days. So I don't even know if we'll level you up. I just think we'll go back with more dudes. Um, I mean, we can give you a level or two because this was you know intense. But yeah, it's up to you if you want to come back and be like, it's been a year, it's been five years, but then she's gonna be dead. So you basically have to decide whether or not your guy's cowardly and he decides that he can't win this fight so he goes and trains for five years to come back and avenge her. Or if you just, yeah, or if you just get help from the bar and you just go down. Like, dude, there were a bunch of people. Yeah, oh my god, now we get, the beginning of next game is going to be you going to all the places and talking to everybody and trying to find somebody to come with. Dude, you know who the strongest people here are? Well, yes, but I mean, the strongest people in this area that you've heard of so far is the Hobgoblins. <laughs> There's an entire fort of them, and it's connected to these tunnels. So, yeah, you can go talk to them. You can... By the way, you found the second entrance. Because remember, there were three. This is the second one. Like, this was the one that was... Because remember, I said there's one to the west. This is the one to the west. Um... No, I like, I kept it a little vague, but yeah. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. So, there it is. Testers and Jesters. I think it turned out pretty good. It took a long time to edit. And I think I could have done better. But I think overall, pretty good. If you liked this, please give Apple, YouTube, and Spotify a reach around. Like, favorite, comment, review, all the things that make them happy so that the show can grow. And as always, thanks for listening. Bye.